Okay, um, it looks like we actually need to mount the um, rotary encoders before we um, can test anything. So we need to carefully straighten the pens. Um, the instructions say they'll be bent for shipping. Mine weren't, but they were certainly bent in shipping. So get them straightened up and then set in their sockets. And they've got little tabs that should kind of grab the board to hold them in place. Uh, I didn't want to mount these just yet because they stick way up off the board and it just seems like they're an accident waiting to happen. Um, but the instructions say we need to put them in at this point and I, I don't know if they're going to be necessary for the test yet uh, or not, but we will go ahead and follow the instructions. Now the instructions I think don't actually say whether I need to solder the uh, either of the mechanical supports, but I will because these are push button rotary encoders. And so they may have a little bit of force put on them. So I'm gonna push in on these rotary encoders and go ahead and hit these supports with a little bit of solder. just to hold them there while I do the pens, and then I'll hit them with more. Okay, both seated flat and square to the board. So I will hit their supports with some more solder. Now these supports take some heat uh, and you can damage things with that much heat, so be careful. Okay, now the next thing it looks like we need to do is actually get the Raspberry Pi in here. Um, with the software installed, put it in and then and then hit the test switch. I think it's somewhere over here, maybe this one right here. Uh, and then hit the test switch, um, short it to, to check the LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my Pi, um, get it booted up and, and ready to go in here and then we'll check those LEDs. Okay, last we left off, we put together almost everything except the switches down here. Um, and it was time to do some testing. So I have here a Raspberry Pi. This happens to be a Model 2. Um, and I've put some electrical tape over the metal uh, USB and Ethernet jacks here because they come, as the instructions say, very close to the back of the board here. And we don't want to short to the back of the LEDs. Um, now, it, actually, the instructions suggest putting some cardboard over this. And I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, because this electrical tape may poke through if it gets if it gets pressed on um, but for now this is going to be good enough and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and mount this Raspberry Pi to the back of the PiDP11 circuit board um, and I have here on this um, micro SD card uh, Raspbian um, Wheezy I assume uh, the the latest stable Raspbian uh, and the PyDP11 code from GitHub, as well as the images uh, from the download page, all installed and ready to go. I've already tested it, so when I, beat th when I boot this, the um, PDP11 emulator comes up in SimH and it starts uh, its default operating system. I think it's RSX11M, uh, and that works. So we put this uh, on the back of the board, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn the board over so we can see the front. And when we plug the power into this board, it should boot into that RSX11M operating system. And after it boots, it should bring us to a, well, if I can get it plugged in. Uh, after it boots, which takes it you know, 30 seconds or so, um, all of these lights should come on. Um, and I haven't quite worked out exactly how the Lincoln Bone panel works here. But I believe 
uh, a it is in test mode um, and we're going to short the test switch here to move it out of test mode uh, and into run mode okay so it's booted um, and all the LEDs did come on, which is a good sign. Uh, as the web page suggests, the most likely problem to have is a problem in the LED uh, matrix here. Of course, we may have a problem in the switch matrix too once we put the, the switches in. But this means that our LED driver chip uh, is running properly and all the LEDs are, are getting power, our bias resistors are correct, etc. So uh, now what we do is we short the top two pins on the test switch here. And what should happen yeah, is we will see the, uh, the I'm sure you've seen this pattern. Um, the, I think this is the, the idle loop for the operating system that's running. Um, and so this means that SimH is successfully talking to the blink and bone and, and everything seems to be uh, working. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be visible on camera, but occasionally you can see the address and the status LEDs up here are, are also blinking. And of course the data register here is doing its little uh, kit dance. Um, so the other things we're supposed to check is rotate the address encoders and make sure that all these LEDs um, light and rotate, and they do. Um, now, I don't know which direction they're supposed to rotate. They're counter rotating from the encoders here. I assume that's okay. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, the data LEDs seem to light as well. Uh, and we can see that they are in fact examining uh, different parts of the, the memory as they do. Um, so that seems to work. The next thing it wants us to do is um, check halt the system um, and then single step it, uh, which I could do using another pair of tweezers here to, to um, hit the, the terminals over here. But you won't be able to see that happening. I don't have the terminal set up to record right now, so I will check that uh, myself later. Um, what I'm seeing is that things seem to be working. We're in, we're in good shape. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get this to shut itself down. We'll see if that works. Um, and then we, I, I can see my terminal over here. Um, I will know uh, if it is in fact working. Uh, let me bring that up. Uh, via SSH, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the, um, the terminal. Uh, and it's at the, uh, the operating system terminal there. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit the halt switch and hold it. And then while I'm holding that, I'll push the address button, which should cause the Raspberry Pi uh, to shut down. It did halt on the SimH. Push the address button. The lights went out, which is a good sign. And then the um, uh, SSH terminal disconnected. So it, it did shut down or it's in the process of shutting down, we'll give it a minute uh, to do that. So everything looks good. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is, um, I think, work on the case a little bit. Uh, according to the instructions, we're going to put the acrylic front panel um, onto the case. We peeked at it before, but we're gonna go ahead and, and get it mounted in the case. Um, I think we're gonna mount the standoffs for the Raspberry Pi maybe, some things like that. Um, and then get this ready to put together so that we can start putting the switches in, making sure they're aligned um, and completing um, the build. So give me a minute here to get this stand out of the way. Um, I'll come right back and we will um, start looking at what we need to do um, to put the case together. All right, believe it or not, I've cleaned up the work area just a little bit. Um, and we're ready to uh, mount the acrylic faceplate to the, the injection molded case. Um, and there are five holes in the acrylic plate faceplate here that we will mount through to these brass nuts that are embedded in the injection molded case using these hex standoffs. And then the hex standoffs, once the faceplate is in there, uh, will we'll stand up and back towards the, the rear of the case, and then the PC board will actually mount to those same hex standoffs. So I have gotten out uh, the five standoffs and then the five screws and five nuts that mate to those screws. Uh, it looks from the instructions like the um, uh, plan here, oops, I have a, a switch carried along with me, 
like this plan here is that these screws will come through the uh, PC board like this and then the nuts will spin down on it and create sort of a captive screw situation uh, so that we can get this in here without the uh, without losing the the screws or losing track of the hex uh, nuts or whatever so we basically put those down smooth against the or flat against the board and then we'll use this to to capture the PC board against the um, standoffs on the faceplate so the first thing we want to do, and I'm going to get my first good look at the entire faceplate, is pull this protective cover off. I'm going to try not to tear up the end of it here because we're going to use the, the protection around that uh, switch on the backside, and that is just a gorgeous faceplate. Um, I hope it's not glaring too much in the camera. It just is. It is gorgeous. So we take this and we lay it down into the case. And go ahead and thread a couple of those hex standoffs through. Kind of wish it had uh, washers on the back here. It did not come with washers. Uh, but I fear that putting washers on it is going to mess up the height of my um, stack up. So I'm, I have M3 washers, but I'm not going to place them in there right now. This one's not wanting to start. There it goes. Just a matter of getting it straight. Okay, take a look at this, make sure it looks lined up. It does, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Um, and then I will go ahead and give each of those just a little bit of a snug with the wrench here. Um, this is, I think, is likely to scratch up the paint on the back a little bit, but it should be, in each of these cases, behind the bezel. Um, and because we're going to be running screws into these, from the other side, I think they need to be reasonably snug. So we'll just go around and give them each a little bit of a tightening. Some of them maybe more than others. That one's still pretty loose. Probably would be worth getting out the metric nut drivers for this. But I didn't think to do that. And I'm being careful here not to touch the back of the board with my wrench. The paint on this actually feels reasonably tough, uh, but I would hate to find out that it's not after I had scratched a... Uh, sorry, I keep bumping the camera. After I had scratched a, uh, a big gouge into my faceplate. So there we go. All tightened up. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to repeat that process, sort of, by putting these screws through the PC board. I like this design. If I remember correctly, um, this was a round hole. Yeah, that doesn't want to move around. And all of the other four holes are, are slotted holes to give it just a little bit of play. Um, that's, that's good thinking. Okay, so now that should screw in on the back of this. Uh, kind of want to see those lights coming through those holes. Uh, but I think the next thing I'm going to do is put the mounting um, pillars on for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and to do that, I think I'm going to have to remove this LED spacer to get to the, to the upper ones. Um, but I'm going to check the instructions again. Um, it said that the... Um, yeah, the standoff is is um, a little too tall because of the way that the Pi headers stack up here. And it, and it looks like it is because this space right here, uh, the black spacer at the bottom of that header, is not as, as deep as the remaining space on this um, pillar here. 
and I want to stop and consult the instructions again and make sure I understand how this mounts. I believe this mounts through from this side with a nut uh, on the back side of the board and that I am supposed to be cutting off uh, a small amount of this height underneath where the, the board mounts here. Um, but I wanna go ahead and check the instructions first and make sure that's what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna check that quickly uh, and then we will come back and um, uh, maybe remove this uh, LED spacer and mount that pie.